In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at operations on functions. So starting us off here, we're going to have two functions that say f and g. And the idea here is we want to take a look at the operation of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So when you're adding or subtracting functions together, notationally it's written in this manner. f plus g acting on x or f minus g acting on x. And when you write that, that becomes either f at x plus g at x or f at x minus g at x. So notationally, this is what people will write. They'll either put the plus or the minus, uh, put that both the f and f plus g or f minus g in brackets, as you see here, and then it's acting on some variable x. And when someone writes that, that is equivalent to writing f at x plus g at x, or if it's a subtraction, uh, it would be f at x minus g at x. Now the idea here is that if you have a function f and you have a function g, when you add those up, those are still a function, and likewise, if you have a function f and you have a function g and you subtract them, the subtraction of two functions is a function. So by doing these operations on functions, you are creating new functions. Likewise, you have the notation for multiplication of two functions, just fg together, acting on x is equivalent to being f at x times g at x. And lastly, the division of two functions, in this case, f divided by g acting on x, is equivalent to f at x divided by g at x. So again, these all create new functions. If you take two functions, f and g, multiply them together, that will create a new function. And likewise, if you take two functions, f and g, and subtract them, that also will create a new function. Now, um, when you do these operations on these functions, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, that will adjust the domain and range of the function because now it's a new function and won't necessarily have the same domain or range of function f or function g. So let's take a look at some examples illustrating this. For the first example here, we're given two functions. So I have a function f denoted by root x and a function g at x denoted by x squared. So first we want to find what is the domain of f plus g. So let's take a look at what f plus g looks like. Well, the function f plus g acting on x is going to be by definition, as we just discussed, f at x plus g at x, and we want to look at, okay, what is f at x? f at x is root of x, and g at x is x squared. So now what's the domain of this function? Well, when you're taking a look at this situation here, to find the domain of f plus g, we have to realize that both of these expressions have to be defined within them. So if we just focus our attention on x squared, you would therefore say the domain is all real numbers. But as we know here, your square root function is not happy if x is less than 0, as you can't take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, intersecting both of these, and again, both of these expressions, x squared and root of x, both have to be defined on your domain. So in this situation here, the domain of f plus g would be all real numbers uh, such that x is greater than or equal to 0. Because if you take any negative number, while x squared is happy with that and has no problem and it's defined, g at x is defined for a negative value, f at x is not. So you have to pick the intersection of uh, both of these domains to find the domain of f plus g. Continuing on here, we want to take a look, okay, what's the domain of f divided by g? Well, if we look at that, we're going to find, okay, what is f divided by g acting on x by definition? Uh, that's f at x divided by g at x, in which case f at x is the root of x and g at x is x squared. Um, at this point here, we want to find the domain of this function. Well, the domain of this function is what? The bottom, um, the domain of the bottom here is fine as long as x is not equal to 0. So already the domain of f divided by g cannot have the value of 0 in it, and this function here is fine. The top is fine as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. So again, we have to kind of intersect both of these together. And therefore, we need to have, for the top to be happy, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And for the bottom to be happy, x cannot be 0. So therefore, for this example, the domain of f divided by g is going to be all real numbers such that x is strictly greater than 0. And notice I cannot include the 0 as we would then be dividing by 0. So we have an example here of the domain of f plus g. 
and the domain of f divided by g. Let's take a look at another example. So for the next example here, they give us two functions. We have uh, 1 divided by the square root of x, that's our f at x, and then x to the power of 5 halves. And they want us to find the multiplication this time. So what is the domain of f times g? Well, f times g acting on x is going to be f at x times g at x, which in this case is going to be 1 over the root of x times x to the 5 halves. So putting this together, this is x to the 5 halves over the square root of x. Now you might be tempted to kind of push this further. Let's say I make this 5 halves. I make this x to the power 1. So this ends up being x squared as your answer. It is wrong to say that the domain of f times g is equal to all real numbers. Because it is true that the domain of x squared is all real numbers. But how we got here was we divided out the top and the bottom. Well, you can only divide out the top and the bottom assuming they're non-zero values. So therefore, by dividing out these two exponents here, we are assuming that x is non-zero. So the question now becomes is how do we evaluate this function? Well, again, to go from here to here, I had to assume that x is non-zero. So when you're evaluating the domain of the function, you have to leave it in its current form and do no simplification to it. So in this situation here, the bottom is going to be happy provided x is greater than 0. The top here, in case you're not familiar with this notation here, the top x to the power of 5 halves is equivalent to um, the square root of x to the power of 5, and then obviously the bottom we have the square root of x. So again, the bottom is happy provided x is strictly greater than 0, and the top is happy provided that x is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, in this situation here, combining these two domains together and kind of intersecting the, what the top wants and what the bottom wants, the domain of fg uh, must be all real numbers uh, such that x is strictly greater than 0. Okay, so this is an important example. Um, and again, a lot of times people are tempted to put an x squared and then say your domain is all real numbers. But again, you got there by simplifying and making assumptions. And in this case here, we canceled off the square root of x on the bottom and it, to go from here to here, and that'll adjust your domain. Let's take a look at another example. So for the next example here, we're just applying, uh, kind of evaluating these uh, operations on functions at certain values. Let's take a look here. This is going to be f at 1 plus g at 1. Well, f at 1 is going to be referencing, obviously, this function here, and g at 1 will be this function here. So this will end up being uh, 1 minus 2 over 1 plus 5 plus the square root of 1 which is negative 1 over 6, plus the square root of 1 is 1, which ends up giving us 5 over 6. Again, this one here, this will be f at negative 5 plus g at negative 5, and f at negative 5 is going to be uh, negative 7 over 0. So right away, we can see, as before I even get going, I can see I'm undefined here. So... Negative 5 is not in the domain of f plus g. Let me write that down here. Negative 5 is not an element of the domain of f plus g. So it's undefined in this situation. Let's take a look at number 3. This will be f at 25 divided by g at 25, in which case here we get 23 over 30, and that's divided by g at 25, so the square root of 25, and this ends up being 23 over 30, divided by 5, and I end up getting here 23 over 150. And again, to remind you here, this is 5 is actually over 1, so you multiply by the flip, and you get 23 over 150. Uh, for the next example here, we're going to evaluate f at 0 divided by g at 0, in which case here, f at 0 is negative 2 fifths, and we're going to divide that by g at 0, which is the square root of 0, and again, we are undefined here. And the reason for that is 0 is not an element of the domain of f divided by g. And lastly here for number 5, we're going to evaluate this. This will be f at 25 times g at 25, in which case we get here negative 23 over 30 times the square root of 25, which is going to be negative 23 over, like we talked about, the square root of 25 is 5, and this reduces to negative 23 
over 6. Let's take a look at our next example. So for the next example here, now we're kind of given uh, two relations, uh, which I assume these are functions as well. If we take a quick check here, we have two functions. So I have two functions, and we want to calculate the domain and range of all these different operations. So uh, domain of f in this case here, if you look at the domain of f, that's just your input values for your function f. This will be 1, 3, 5, and 6. Domain of g is going to be 1, 3, and 6. The domain of f plus g is the intersection of both of these sets here. So I have 1, 3, 6 and 1, 3, 5, 6. The domain of f plus g is where they're both happy and they're both happy at 1, 3, and 6. So continuing on here, now we want to find the domain of f times g. So domain of f times g is the same idea. Where is the function f and where is the function g both happy? Well, that's going to be exactly the same spot as f plus g. So in this case here, the domain of f times g is also 1, 3, and 6. Now moving on to the next example here, we want to find the domain of f divided by g. Again, you might be tempted to put 1, 3, and 6 again because that's where the function f and g are both defined. However, because we're dividing by g, notice that when g acts on 1, its image is 0, and therefore we will be dividing by 0. So because of that, we're going to kick out the 1, and the domain of f divided by g is now 3 and 6. Now that we found the domain of these functions, the range is fairly easy. You're now just taking the images of these values. So the range of f is going to go when f acts on 1, the output is going to be a 2. When f acts on 3, we can see it right here. When f acts on 3, the output is going to be a 4. And when f acts on 5, the output is a negative 2. And when f acts on 6, the output is a 0. Okay, I just moved this over to give us a little more room here. Now the range of g, again, that's all your output values. So 0, 2, and negative 4. 0, 2, and negative 4. Now, if you want to find the range of f plus g, notice that the range of f plus g is going to be what? Well, the domain of f plus g is 1 plus 6. So the range of f plus g is going to be f at 1 plus g at 1, which f at 1 is 2 and g at 1 is 0. So one of the images will be 2. Then f at 3 plus g at 3 f at 3 is 4, plus g at 3 is 2, so another image will be 6. And lastly, the function acting on 6 is going to be f at 6 plus g at 6. f at 6 is g 0, and g at 6 is negative 4, and you get an output of uh, negative 4 here. So the range of f plus g is going to be 2, 6, and negative 4. Okay, continuing on here, we'll look at f divided by g. Well, again, the domain of f divided by g, as we remember, is 3 and 6. So therefore, f at 3 divided by g at 3 is going to be f at 3 is 4, and g at 3 is 2. So that's going to output a 2. The other value would be f at 6 divided by g at 6 f at 6 is 0, g at 6 is negative 4, and that's going to output a 0. So in this situation here, the range of f divided by g is 2 and 0. And lastly, the range of f times g is going to be what? Well, the domain of f times g is 1, 3, and 6, so f at 1 times g at 1. f at 1 is 2, g at 1 is 0, outputting a 0 for the range. f at 3 times g at 3 is our next input value for the domain. Uh, f at 3 is 4, g at 3 is 2, and we get an output of 8. And lastly, f at 6 times g at 6, f at 6 is 0, g at 6 is negative 4, so the output is 0 once again. So the range of f times g is 0 and 8. Okay, that concludes our lesson on operations on functions. Thank you.